Hello people, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to be talking about the new Bluetooth audio amps by Shure. These amps are part of their new These amps are part of their new Wandom line, and... Oh my god. These amps are part of their new Wandom line, and the boards are sometimes called Job, J-A-B. I don't, I don't. So I'm gonna put links in the description to where you can purchase everything we're gonna be talking about today, as well as links to more information about these boards. So there's really two amp boards within this line. Uh, there's the JB1, which offers 15 watts into two channels and has onboard Bluetooth 2.1. And then there's the JAB2, which has two varieties. There's the 30 watts into two channel version and the 50 watt into two channel version. Uh, both those boards have Bluetooth 4.0 built in. And all those boards use a Class D digital audio amp uh, made by TI. So I've been waiting for a long time for a board just like this one. Something that is well made, uh, really easy to install, and has the ability to be, to be used in a variety of different projects. These amps will also work really well with my speaker building plans. Um, actually, from here on out, all my new plans will incorporate this amp. As a really short aside, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you that have downloaded my build plans. Um, it's so much more than I expected when I first put them up, and you really are helping me to continue making these videos. So thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, so something that's really important to the DIY community is versatility. And a good audio amp needs the ability to be applied to all sorts of projects. So anything from a standalone amp to a variety of powered speakers. So the one great thing about this audio amp line is they offer a few extra things that you can get to make this audio amp fit perfectly with your project. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the wiring kit. The wiring kit comes with a power cable, speaker cables, power switch cable, aux in cable, volume control cable with volume pot, three LED indicators with cables, a battery charging cable. Now, depending on your project, you may need a power connector and a on off switch, uh, which you'll have to purchase separately. I think this is great because it makes ordering and setup super easy. Uh, and it also takes some of the headaches out of troubleshooting your setup. It also allows you to experiment with things you might not normally put into your projects. So like the LEDs, for example. Um, so you can use just what you need, but if you need everything, it's all there. So the next thing I really like about these amps are the extension boards. Uh, they offer a interface extension board and a lithium battery extension board. The interface board offers a 3.5 millimeter aux in port, two USB charging ports, and a power switch. This is gonna be a great addition to some people's speaker builds. Um, I'm not super stoked on this board, mostly because the power switch is just really ugly <laughs> and aesthetics is a big part of why I make speakers. So, but it, it's still a good quality board. Uh, it does offer some, some good things like charging. I think the USB charging ports is a great addition. Um, so I'm really excited about the lithium ion battery board. It holds three 18650 lithium ion batteries there's over voltage and under voltage protection and voltage balancing. So it's safe, it's convenient, and it's a great option for portable speakers and a boombox build. So let's do a dry run, put it all together and see how it works.
So to hear that feedback, I made a mistake. And the mistake I made was I put my trust into a product before I actually tested it. And it seems these boards don't quite live up to my expectations for them. But this story still has a happy ending. It's okay. I shot that last bit about two weeks ago, and after fooling around with the board for a little while, I realized that not all hope is lost. So it seems that the feedback that you're hearing while listening through Bluetooth is being caused by the aux input jack. So if you remove the aux input jack from the audio board, the feedback goes away. But of course we want both the ability to listen through the aux input jack and Bluetooth. Well, I figured out by just removing one wire from the aux input jack to the board, the feedback went away. Now, I'm pretty sure this wire is used to switch the board between Bluetooth and the aux input jack when a wire is inserted into the jack, the aux input jack. Um, but after removing the wire, I was still able to use the Bluetooth and the aux just fine. So I don't know, I, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know. I still think this is a great board for DIY speaker builders. And with this simple little hack, you can make the board work as it should and without any major problems. Um, is this the end all be all salvation board for DIY speaker builders that it could have been? Uh, no, but it's really close. And it's probably the best thing we've got. I've drawn up a free guide to getting this board working properly on a blog post over on my website. You can check it out up here. Uh, there you can also find speaker building plans that can use this board. Oh, and I'll put the links down in the description. And I think that's it. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you again later. Next video. Thank you.